Greetings once again, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. My talk today circles around the fact that once a week we usually like to take a look at the truck form factor and any new developments or insights that might be available from that. So that's what we're doing today is looking at a couple of new truck form factors for the electric truck. The Gates for Stakes, Nokia Mall, Spy Bond, and Sarasvita, and Nihao Ma. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Um, as you can see, we're kind of visiting the front of the Capitol, and uh, as I will get a bunch of quotes on it, you're right, it's a wee bit noisy because of the water that's behind me, but uh, I think it's worth the nice view today. I wanted to cover in this week's uh, episode a little bit about sort of form factors with trucks that I was sort of we're heading towards and sort of letting that ride in terms of conversations that might emerge from that. So um, I had an encounter about, I want to say four years ago now, where I was allowed to drive maybe a $300,000 Ferrari for an hour or two. And it was just as Ferrari had made the transition to Tiptonic, which is instead of there being a stick shift that you move around, they had the gears on buttons on the steering wheel. So I, after getting the car, I was like, looks great, sounds like a Ferrari, terrific. And then as I started using those gears to move the car around, um, I was fascinated because I want to say it was a little bit anticlimactic given that um, uh, I'd been anticipating getting a chance to drive a Ferrari full out for a long time. And what I was intrigued by is that when you learn to drive a stick, there are all these things you learn about the engine, uh, you know, what the sound is going to be like when you do shifts and, and sort of getting above or below that number, just all kinds of interesting little elements of that. And I was really surprised because um, the Tiptonic was more efficient because you don't have to move your hand as far to change gears, but it felt like... Um, it really lost a lot in uh, quality of the experience to not have a full-blown, you know, gear situation. Um, I do think it lowers cost. I think it's easier on the body to drive that way, etc. But I can say it was a little bit of a downer. Now, when we get over to the electric trucks, I was fascinated because one person that drove a Tesla battery pack powered Mercedes electric truck was surprised because as he drove the vehicle, he was kind of expecting a, a unique situation. It was just a very smooth ride, no issues, turning easy, everything was easy. Um, there wasn't a gear shifter on it. Um, it was uh, a light duty rather than the, the uh, full semi truck, but the way it was configured in terms of number of batteries and the way uh, it was geared, it was very much like what you would see in the current semi. So to further dive into this, what I found fascinating is there was a report recently that talked about the fact that, well, number uh, for people who drive buses and trucks and motorcycles, for example, the vibration from those large engines through the cabin of the truck will actually cause all kinds of bodily harm, including loss of sexual function for many people. So I'm intrigued by the move from big electric truck over to, um, from, from big ICE or diesel trucks over to electric is actually gonna start having an impact on the health of those drivers because of the lack of that. Another form factor I found fascinating was the fact that as we've talked about before, anytime you drive a, a big truck or an old line car that's, a, uh, that's in the race car zone, there, there's less support for the driver than you would get in a normal um, automatic engine. So there's a concept called heel and toe while double clutching. And basically what this is about is that, you know, you put it in first gear, you have to wind the engine up uh, manually, then 
put it in neutral, then wind it up again, go into second. So as a result, you'll often hear big truckers grinding gears because they're trying to find the right gear that interfaces with where they are on speed and the weight that they're pulling. And as we move into electric, given that it, it's a torque monster and offers all the torque at the instant, guess what? You know, you're not going to have that issue anymore. So as people might be taught this through longer training periods in a driving school, you know, there's another example of something that goes to the wayside as we move over to electric. I um, thought that the other part of my trucking discussion today would kind of focus on what do we find uh, in terms of Elon Musk, reviewing Elon Musk's comments to see if there were any items that he had covered during his talk about what he would, what, what we were going to see from this truck. You know, his first argument was that um, the, the electric truck could outpull the diesel. We covered that because uh, the diesel needs to build up, uh, you know, the torque that it needs to, to move vehicles. So an electric easily beats it. And so this is the argument that I made for why the uh, Tesla would be excellent on large hills, um, you know, relative to instant torque, you know, don't have to build up with speed. A lot easier to drive that vehicle on a big hill, not to mention the regenerative braking helping for the downhill side of that to both recharge the battery and lowering the cost of burning up brakes because you're using the engine uh, to help slow the vehicle and its load down. The second thing he talked about was it handles like a race car. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting because if you got no gears, most of the race cars, even if they're going to Tiptonic, actually have race, have gears. I think what he was talking about was the fact that, you know, the car handles very, or the, the truck handles very smoothly and quickly, not unlike a car would. So you don't have to endure um, the slowdown in process that one would have with heel and toe while double clutching and other techniques that large trucks use to sort of manage their speed. Um, the third thing he reviewed was that he was talking about the fact that, you know, the guys in that division had done a good job in preparation for this activity. Now, I have to admit, when he first announced this, the whole thing caught me by surprise and a lot of other folks by surprise because the assumption was that Tesla had its hands full enough trying to get the Model 3 into the marketplace and had no interest in more challenges when it came to, you know, dealing with all the issues related to getting a truck ready. So not only did he explain that they'd been working on it, but he also explained that uh, he was driving a prototype successfully that um, would be you know, shown to the public to, to drive in September, only four or five months later. So I thought this was interesting, and the research that we did sort of revealed the fact that um, it wasn't just as the analysts had suggested, a few guys decided they wanted to look into it. Tesla actually hired the head of Mercedes-Benz uh, Trucking Operations in the United States uh, at their Freightliner division in Oregon and brought him in to help uh, build out this solution. And so I really think this showed, you know, that he was dead serious about getting a great product out and he was putting a team together around it to make sure that it was mindful of everything necessary to be successful. I guess the final item that we've kind of recently covered was the fact that not only was he trying to address the needs of trucks, but he was also looking at things like um, the fact that the whole furor over what's going to happen with autonomous driving, particularly as it gets to trucks, the fact that the whole idea of pooling was brought up recently, and the fact that Tesla has been working on it and, and uh, getting ready to uh, implement tests of it was a sign that um, not only is he putting his toe in by getting an electric truck product ready, but he's also getting ready for a tow-in where those electric plot, uh, trucks can be run in pools. And this means that you can save fuel, et cetera, even driver time by pooling vehicles together for those long hauls. So this wasn't a huge game changer in terms of review, 
but I definitely think uh, electric has a lot to offer in terms of form factors that help make it a great uh, solution uh, for those considering electric to move to. And it easily, with a double or tripling of mileage, et cetera, makes it worth the time and effort uh, for everyone involved to look seriously at that solution. I want to thank you again for taking time out to visit with us. This is Greg for Tesla Ant Fan Insight. Uh, please like and subscribe. Tschüss, macht's gut. Au revoir tout à l'heure. I'm closing you out with a view of our in, in front of the capital surroundings and the water you've been hearing. Have a great day.